Welcome back to the episode on pull requests of the Git version control with Git series. Pull requests, I like to think of them as the polite way to collaborate. There are other ways you can collaborate on a project in GitHub. For example, you can add a collaborator directly to have access to your repository. Um, this one is a way you can collaborate even if you don't have access to a repository. So one example is the lessons which I'm teaching right now. So these lessons are created by an open source community of instructors, and we don't all have access to those lessons, only the people called maintainers or lesson developers do and so what happens is I go let's say I go teach somebody else's lesson I find a typo or something I think needs to be fixed I can suggest those changes back to the lesson and then the maintainer or the lesson developer can go in and say oh I like that change I'm something along those lines and so um, we, there's a, it's a way you can collaborate with others even if you don't have permissions to those repositories and it's a way of suggesting changes instead of directly pushing them with a collaborator that you added directly they have direct access to write to it which could be more efficient depending on what kind of project you're working on in general I like to work with pull requests it gives a chance for my collaborators to review my changes and for me to get feedback on them as well so it's a nice opportunity there and so we'll continue to work with pull requests here. And so in this episode, we're going to be working with an existing repository. And this repository is at the following URL, github.com forward slash capital U capital W dash Madison with a capital M dash data with a capital D science with a capital S forward slash countries underscore async. This address will also be linked in the description of the this video, so you can go to it directly. And so this is a repository that's created. It's at my organizational account. And so I do actually have permission to write to it, but we're going to imagine that I don't. Um, but it's not my account. I Someone else, the organization actually owns it. And so I'm able to put in a pull request in the same way you could put in a pull request for this same repository. And so we're gonna walk through you actually actually adding a country to this country's repository. And so this one is for people who are doing these videos to go ahead and suggest a country. Right now you can see that there's a README, you can see that Vlad added a uh, file in the United States because my user is still set up for Vlad. And I have a little bit of a README here saying what this repository is. The repository might look slightly different when you open it because there may have been others who've created pull requests and contributed to this, this repository. And so I'm going to create a repository. Uh, I'm going to create a pull request adding France to as a country to this country's list. So I'm going to add a file on France. The first thing I'm going to do with this repository is create a copy that I do have access to. Remember, this is my organization, so I do actually have access to it, but we're going to pretend like I don't because you don't have access to it. And the first thing we're going to do is create a copy of this repository that's on my own account. That way I can edit it and then suggest changes. And to do so, I'm going to click this fork button here. Um, the fork button is going to create a copy and it's going to copy it to my account. So if I go ahead and click fork, can see here it has a couple options here um, I can change which account I want to clone it to but I'd like to clone it to my account I could change the repository name as I make this fork but I'm gonna leave it the same so it matches I'm gonna leave the description the same and here it gives an option that it you could copy more than one copy all the branches or copy just the main branch this one only has a main branch at present so um, I do want to copy the main branch and only the main branch for that reason. And so I'll go ahead and click create fork. And now you can see I have this copy and it does tell me that my branch is up to date with the original one. This original repository is often what's called the upstream repository. So the repository I forked this from. Um, and so you can see that I have my account and then the country's async is the name of my repository. And it tells me that I forked it from the UW Madison data science version of this repository, which again is often called the upstream repository. And so I can see all the same files and all the same commits. But now that I forked it, if I want to keep it up to sync with 
uh, the UW Madison one, I'd need to use this sync fork option or push and pull from from one repository to the next. And so now I'm gonna set up my local version of this so I can edit it. I will say it is possible to make edits to files inside GitHub. There's some editing options in GitHub. Um, we're gonna stick to using Nano on our local computer because that's what we've been doing throughout this series. But occasionally when you're making a small change or you wanna work in GitHub, it is possible. And GitHub's been adding more and more features along that line as well. And so I need to make uh, ver bring a version of this repository to my local computer. And again, I can do that with clone, which we learned in the last episode. So I'm going to clone. And again, make sure you that you're on your copy, your fork, because we want to clone from our own fork. That way the origin connection is from our own fork. And then we'll purposefully set up another connection to the UW Madison, the upstream repository instead. So make sure that you're on your fork and then click the code button and copy the SSH SSH address because we have SSH keys set up and then we'll go back to our local computer here and here on our local computer oops, and here on our local computer let's see where we're at so we're in our planets repository and it's not best practice to make a git repository within a git repository and so if we put countries inside of planets remember the when once we've initialized a repository as git it will track all of the files in that folder and, and any of the subfolders so if i put countries inside planets the planets git repository git would try to track all the changes made in in countries and the countries repository would try and track all the changes made in that folder as well and so then you'd be double tracking it would try and track the git folder as well and it gets complicated so best practice is to not nest git repositories within one another if you find yourself needing sub projects you can there are options for that with github and i'd recommend checking those at the when you need that option so i need to cd into my desktop so i'll cd up one folder into my desktop and now I can clone into a folder that's not a Git repository. I can double check that this is not a Git repository by typing ls.git or forward slash dot, dot git. And you can see there is no dot git directory in my current folder. And so I know that this isn't a Git repository on my desktop. And so I will type git clone and then I will paste. Oop, I have the co accidentally copied the name of my planets folder and so I need to go back and copy my SSH address and so now I can type git clone and paste in the address to um, the country's async again this is my fork of the country's async reposit repository and so you can see it's at my username and so here I've copied the remember the clone does multiple things here it creates the folder called countries async it makes that origin connection to the place that we told it to clone from and it pulls down the latest changes of that that main branch to my local computer so if i type cd into countries async now if i type ls i should see that i have my readme and my united states file the same thing i saw on github and if i type git remote dash v i see that i have an origin connection to my fork on github and then if i type git log dash dash one line i can see the history of this repository for me right now that's pretty short this may be a bit longer for you if others have made changes to this repository since i recorded this video Okay, and you may also see more files in your LS for that same reason. You may see countries that other folks have added via asynchronous pull requests while watching this video. And so I'm going to go ahead and create a suggestion of adding a new country to this repository. And so I'm going to add the country France. You can choose whichever country you'd like to add. Um, you can add it as well. And let's see what's in this United States file before we get started. So I, from here, I'm going to make a suggestion of adding a new country to this repository. I'm going to add 
France. So I'm going to add a file on France. And before I do that, I, anytime I'm going to make a new suggestion of something to add to a remote repository, I need to make a branch so that I'm working in that branch. I also want to make sure that my version on my local computer is the latest version anytime I go to work on something. And you could imagine that between the time that I forked and cloned this repository, somebody may have been working on that what's called the upstream repository again. The upstream repository made changes and I no longer have those changes. And so sometimes I'm going to want to be able to update my current version of the of the repository on my local machine with the changes that are on GitHub. And so to do so, I can add a remote directly from the upstream repository to my local computer. So I can pull directly from that upstream and update my, my local repository. And so I can type git remote add. And remember that that repository is typically called upstream. And so I'm going to call it upstream when I add it here as well. And then I need to go back to my folders here and I need to reopen the, the upstream repository and copy the SSH from that, that repository. And I will add it, get remote add. And then if I type git remote dash V, I can now see that I have two remotes to choose from whenever I push um, or pull, and that's remote the origin or the upstream version. So that's the data science hub version or my local, my account version. Um, and because you probably don't have the ability to write directly to upstream, even though it says push here, you are actually not able to push. And if you tried to push, it would give you an error. For me, it won't give me an error because I'm also a member of the data science hub repository here or organization here. And so let's imagine that the data science hub did an edit to the repository since the last time I've changed it. For you, nothing will have changed. But for me, they did actually make changes to the upstream repository since the last time I worked since I forked and cloned it. And so I can type git pull and I want to pull from the upstream repository and I want to pull the main branch. And here you can see I got a fast forwarding update. Yours probably says that everything is up to date because no one went behind the scenes and made a change um, between the time that you forked and cloned it. And so you'll see that someone added an extra line to the United States dot text. And if I cat United States now, States dot text, it actually has this new line about the largest city, where previously it only had the two lines about the population and the capital. And so adding a second remote can be really useful for updating your local repository to whatever the main one is. And so this is also related to how we work with branches. And so we're going to suggest changes to the the data science hub copy of the country's async and we're going to suggest those changes in a branch that's not called main we're going to keep our main branch in sync with the main branch of countries async from the github from data science hub and so since that organization is the like authoritative this is the latest version we want our main branch to be in sync so that we always can go to that version um, and say we wanted to suggest multiple countries we can get back to the main version and suggest those changes without our history having changes that have not maybe not have been have not been accepted by data science hub yet in our history and so branching overall allows us to suggest changes that are not linked to one another so remember in our history when we were working with branches the two branches were in parallel to one another so changes made in one branch of two separate branches um, changes made in one branch and changes made in the other, we're not aware of one another. And so we can make changes and suggest them separately. And so this might be if, for example, you found two bugs in someone's code that you were working with. You found one bug that is a small syntax error and you found one bug that is 
a bigger function issue that needs to refactoring. And so those two changes are not linked to one another. And so when you go to suggest them, you'd want to suggest them separately so that the maintainers of that software can decide if they want to accept one or the other. Maybe the syntax error is immediately a problem and the bigger issue is something that they'll spend longer on fixing. And so you can suggest those that small syntax error be fixed by itself and then can can work on the longer process of fixing the the bigger error that needs refactoring and so as long as those are on separate branches um, they are not aware of one another and their histories won't um, have the history of the changes in them and so anytime we go to suggest we want to start with a branch that matches the main branch and we're going to make a new branch off of that to suggest our changes in and so first thing we need to do is make that branch. Let's look at our branches. We should have only one branch, the main branch. And now we need to make a new one. I'm gonna call mine git, uh, I'm gonna type, use git checkout dash b to create a branch and move to it at the same time. Remember, you can also do that in two steps by doing git branch the new branch name and then git checkout the new branch name, but I can do it in one step if I add the dash b flag here. Um, and so I'm gonna call mine add France. And so I'm going to add, I'm going to create a branch that adds France in it, but I'm keeping the main branch at, matched up with what country's async has. And so here I've switched to the new branch. I can double check that with git branch. I can see that I'm on the add France branch now. And now I can make all the changes that I want to suggest to this repository. And so I'll type nano. Well, first, I'll actually make a copy of the United States file. So I'll copy United States.txt to France.txt. And so you'll want to name your branch with whatever country you're adding and whatever uh, country you're at. You'll name your file with whatever country you're adding as well. And I don't recommend choosing France. I won't I'll leave my pull request so you can see it, um, but choose another country and then I'll be able to merge it in. Choose a country that's not already in this repository so that then your changes can be accepted and you can make your, full re your pull request and I can actually put it into this repository later. And so if I copy United States to France, then I can nano france.txt. And so you may need to go to Wikipedia. I'm going to go ahead and add the latest values for France, but look up your country and add in, up, up, update this file to have its population, capital, and largest city. So the latest population for France is 1,000,000. The largest city is, or the capital is Paris, and as is the largest city. And now I can save these changes and exit and save the, and also commit them with our version control. So control X, yes, I'd like to keep the same, save the changes. And then I'd like to keep the same, the same and enter. So we type get status. We can see I modified the, or I added a file called france.txt. I can type git add france.txt, git commit dash M, adding file on france. And now, and I, one of the things I should have checked before was to make sure I was on the right branch. In my get status, it actually did tell me I was on the right branch. And so now I have this add France branch where I have new changes that are not in my main branch. I can see that again, but if I type git log dash dash one line, I can see that my upstream main and my main are all uh, have to the largest city. Origin is still one commit behind because it doesn't have the latest information about the adding largest city because I pulled that from upstream, but I never pushed it to the origin from main. Um, I also could use that sync button on GitHub to update it as well. I will do that shortly, but for now, I can see that my add France branch is a little bit further ahead. And so now I wanna get these changes onto my fork on GitHub. And so I can push them with git push origin. So I'm pushing them to origin, which again is my fork origin. And I'm gonna push the add France branch now here. Oh, add French branch. Now, if I go to GitHub, I can reload the page here 
And actually here I'm on the upstream repository and you can see that it automatically asks me if I want to compare and make a pull request. Let's go to my copy and you can see actually it does that as well. And so it's automatically thinking that, oh, you have a new branch here. Do you want to create, compare it and create a pull request from it? And we do. Alternatively, we can, we can go to pull requests and say new pull requests, but this pop-up is really nice if you have just pushed a branch. And so here, this pull request that we're creating, it says that we're suggesting to the main branch of the Data Science Hub repository. Um, and what we're suggesting is that it look at the Add France branch of my personal copy of the country's repository. By default, it filled in because I had a single commit with my commit name here. Um, I might want to add a little more to the title of this suggestion, depending on what it is. I think it's pretty good for now. I might add a little te other text like, um, you know, this is a really useful tool and thank you for creating it. Here's a suggested change I have for your repository. I'm going to leave that blank for now. One of the other things I also like to make sure, I like to check allow edits by maintainers. That makes it a little bit easier if maintainers have suggestions on my uh, pull request that they can can make changes a little more easily. And so now that I've created it, I'm going to go ahead and actually suggest those changes by clicking the create pull request button. And here you can see it swapped me over to the data science hub, the upstream version of this repository. And now I'm in pull request there because that's where the pull request actually gets filed on the repository um, that I'm suggesting it to. And it can see that it says, I want to, I'm suggesting that they merge the commit to the upstream main branch from my local cop, my copy of Add France branch. And they can see my text here, whatever I wrote about it. They can also look at the files that are changed by clicking the file change tab here and review them. Sometimes they might see, see like, oh, actually the largest city has changed. Maybe uh, France's population's has grown in different ways and the largest city has changed. So they could actually make a comment on this line and be like, oh, this needs to be updated with the, the largest city of Paris. They can also leave me comments in this conversation tab here. Um, at the bottom here, they could write, thanks for this suggestion. Um, can you also add the, can you also add the continent? To this file. Maybe their standards have changed and they want me to add the content. And, um, so they've, let's imagine this is my collaborator or the person who's a maintainer on this lesson. They say, oh, thanks for the suggestion. Can you also add the content to this file? And so I can actually make changes um, as long as I make those changes in, in the Add France branch and then push them, they will get added to this pull request. So that's how I can update this pull request to include the continent as well. So I'm going to go back and edit my pull request. So I'll go back to my local computer. Here I want to make sure that I'm on the Add France branch again. So get branch. I'm still on Add France. If I had done some other things and created different branches, I would need to go back to this Add France branch because this is the one that I specified in my pull request. And so now that I know I'm in that branch, I could type nano france.txt and I'm going to add continent Europe. And I'm going to exit it. I'm going to save it. So why? Yes, I'd like to save the changes. Enter. I'd like to keep the same name. Get status. Again, I'm on the right branch and I've added this. I've modified the france.txt file. And so I'm going to say get add france.txt, get commit-m, added continent. And so these changes are still only on my local machine. I need to get them to my fork on GitHub. So I can type git push origin add France, because remember I'm pushing the add France branch. Now, if I go take a look on GitHub, you can see 
the pull request automatically tells me that there's new changes since the last time I reviewed this pull request. And I can see that there's a new commit that's the added continent commit. Um, in addition to seeing the files changed, I can also look at the commit history in this commits tab. So I can see what commits have been added in this branch. Um, checks I haven't used much. They I'm sure have uses, but I don't go to that tab very much myself. And then um, files change. So here I can see now the files change reflects that additional line I added with the continent. So anytime we need to update the pull request, we can make changes to that same branch and update it. So for after we've put this pull request in, now it's up to the maintainers to decide what they want to do with it. Um, they so You'll see here that mine looks a little different from yours because I have a merge pull request option. Can I dismiss that for the moment? I have a merge pull request option. You, pro you won't have this option unless you belong to the Data Science Hub organization and have the ability to merge in changes to that particular repository. And so this change, the suggestions there, they, the person who is a maintainer on this will see this merge pull request button and they might go give you, go back and forth asking you for changes. And um, once it's happy and they're like, oh, we'll go ahead and, and add this in, then they can click the merge pull request button. This works similarly to a merge when we merged in branches. It's merging that branch in and you'll see a merge commit where the branches are merged together. Um, and then it will actually be into the main repository and have a history of who, who created that, those changes. I'm going to leave this pull request unmerged so that it's here when you come to look for it. And so if you go to pull requests in the UW-Madison Data Science or a country's async repository, you should see my, my pull request here and you can take a look at it. Um, if you have already gone ahead and submitted your pull request, um, I will be getting a notification as a maintainer of this repository and I will try and get it merged as soon as possible. And so thank you for your contribution to the, the country's async repository. And so here we've learned a little bit about how we can create pull requests. Let's look at the Let's look at the current version that's on our fork. So if I switch back to my fork, actually, if I click create fork, it's going to try and create another fork here. Um, and even if I want it at the same address, it'll try and give it a new name. But I want to go to my fork so I can click this little drop down menu and I can go to my personal fork of this. Um, can I dismiss that message for a second. That's a useful message, but I'm going to not use it right now. Um, and so here you can see that I have a main branch and I have an add France branch. So I can see both my branches, um, the one I made for the pull request and the original one. The original pull main branch here is a commit behind UW Madison data science main. And there's a couple options I could do for syncing this. One is I could go back to my local version of it. I could switch back to my main branch because I know it is in sync. So I could type git checkout main branch. I could make sure it's in sync by typing git pull origin main. So, oh, sorry, upstream main because I want it to be in sync with the upstream repository main. Oh, and here you can see what happens if you type the name of a remote wrong. I missed the R in upstream says that that remote doesn't exist. And so I have the latest version of upstream here. If I type git push origin main, I'm not going to actually run it because I'm going to show you the other way to sync as well. But if I type git push origin main, then I could push the, the latest changes from the upstream that I have just gotten to my origin for main branch. Um, and so again, I didn't run that. I put a comment in front of it. And so this is still one commit behind. This is a recently added functionality, at least as of the recording of this video. Um, you can now sync your forks um, in GitHub as well. So now it tells me it's one commit behind. And so I can click this sync fork button and say update branch. And now it's updated my main branch in my fork without me having to push and pull or pull and push as I was showing you from the, the terminal. So both are options for how you could keep your main branch of the fork in sync as well. This concludes the version control with Git series and the pull request episode. Um, for our last few pieces of advice, 
that I'd like to give you about Git repositories is um, I recommend trying to make open public repositories as much as possible to contribute to open science. Also think about choosing a license. So this allows people to use your repository. By default, anything you put up there is all rights reserved. And so be careful what you use of others on GitHub. Um, be sure to check the license before to make sure you're using it appropriately. Um, but you, when you go to publish yours, make sure you put a license on there that reflects how you would like users to be able to use your any tools or text that you put up on, on GitHub. In addition, another thing I'd like to add is that GitHub is very flexible and Git and GitHub are very flexible. And so there's lots of things you can do with them. Um, we show, I showed the most common uses of GitHub, how to create a history in your local at your local computer, how to use it with GitHub by pushing and pulling and how to collaborate in GitHub. Um, but there are other things you might wanna do, say you messed up a commit message and you wanna fix it, that's called a git amend. Um, so you can amend a, a commit after you've committed it. Um, so oftentimes if I had done something in Git and I think, oh, I wish I could do this, I can Google search it. And usually there's pretty good documentation or otherwise information on the web about how other things you can do with Git. This, what you've learned today should give you a good start and foundation to build upon for learning more skills that you can do with Git. I'd also like to add that while we've used Git from the command line in this, this tutorial, um, you can't ver you can do some of the things in GitHub directly. So I mentioned that previously, but also a lot of text editors and modern text editors and inter IDEs or uh, interactive developer environments have options for working with version control and Git in particular as well. One example of that is that Git R Studio has. Um, when you're working with R and RStudio, it has a tab, especially for version controlled repositories with Git that lets you do some of those adding and committing right within the RStudio interface. And so whatever favorites, text editor or IDEs you like to use, um, check them out to see if they have um, version control compatibility with Git. Finally, thanks for watching this set of videos. Please feel free to add, ask, add questions in comment on YouTube. We're happy to try and answer those questions as we can. Hope this video helps you start using version control with Git. For me, it helps control the chaos of my brain into an organized file system with a history that I think is useful for both myself and others.